Hi, my name is Slinky. Thank you for listening to To My Mom. I never listen. Man, this is going to be fun. I mean, Ari McDonald, Sam Thomas, and Kate Reese. Are you kidding me? The Arizona trifecta, if you will. Literally the trifecta. I mean, the way you guys are dropping threes right now, come on, let's bring it. How about it, Ari? Um, break down your game a little bit and tell me what's going on that's working so well for your game, meaning Arizona. Yeah, uh, playing tenacious defense. Um, a lot of people love smothering them 94 feet, even into the half court. Uh, driving, finding teammates, open shooters, everybody's contributing. And I think that contributes to our success that we're having right now. Sam, you're the most veteran of this group. I mean, you've been around the block the longest. What's your take on where your team is right now? Because uh, I want to remind everybody that there were only six wins your first year, and now you've positioned yourself as one of the best stories in college basketball. Yep. We just keep improving every year. I think this is our best year so far, obviously. So just proud that we were able to gain some additions like Ari and Kate to help us get to where we are now. We're just going to keep pushing forward. Kate, what is life like in the top ten? I mean, it's amazing. Um, I think if you look, like you said, like our story is just, it's crazy to think that we started um, with so few wins and now we have so few losses, knock on wood. But I mean, I just think it just goes to show all of our hard work and the vision that we all saw when we came to Arizona and how we've kind of turned that into a reality. So I think that it's great and it just shows um, our improvement and our continuous hard work. That's Kate Reese. We've got Ari McDonald and Sam Thomas from Arizona. Um, Sam, what's the most impressive thing about your team that you guys do when the lights are not on and nobody is watching? Um, on the court? <laughs> um, I would just say... Me either. I'll take both. <laughs> Um, I would probably say um, just the hard work we put in, especially with pressing. We do like to press the entire game. So, and it doesn't start from anywhere. We have to do it in practice. So I think just showing that we do work on these things. We work on the little details of trapping, when to trap, who to trap. I think just focusing on all those little details and the hard work is something that a lot of people probably don't see behind the scenes. Ari, I had your game on Monday night on ESPN2 against Oregon, and I know you guys had never gone in there and won before. What did that feel like on Monday night? You beat them by 20, and you swept them for the regular season. That was huge for the program, and um, I couldn't be proud of these two players sitting beside me. Kate had a great game, only missing three shots for like 30-plus minutes. That's incredible. Sam contributed 14, it's just – it was huge. Um, you know, Oregon had a game plan for me, and it was effective. But, you know, two teammates stepped up. Trinity stepped up, and so I'm just proud of them. Kate, one of the things that Oregon has is a lot of size. And you just stepped away from the bucket and dropped down a couple of triples, and you just kept scoring at will. I mean, what did you eat for breakfast, or was that a part of the game plan? <laughs> um, I mean, I just – I don't even know. I just – I just – I. I just felt like I literally couldn't miss. I don't know. It was just <laughs> like, one of those days. No, it was, just, it was just one of those days, literally. Like, I just, I was, I don't know. I don't know. It just felt like something in me. I just knew, like, once I started hitting shots that I was going to have a really good game and my teammates kept finding me. Um, I mean, I just, I think I, like Ari said, I stepped up a little bit for that game and I'm glad I could for that game um and just continue to be there and help my teammates whatever way so we can succeed and um I think we're kind of peaking at the right time too if you look back we were playing better basketball than we were at the beginning or even kind of a couple of weeks ago honestly before we got kind of shut down so I think that we're doing great we're working hard and we're just we're looking forward to um our games this weekend and um just kind of closing out the season on a good note Sam, I don't know if you saw on social media following the UConn-South Carolina game, but Coach Oriema put out a, a video on what role players do and why they're important. And when people call themselves role players, why does it sound like it's such a negative thing? It certainly is not a negative thing. Your role has changed every year. You know, you were the, you were the scorer the first year, and your role continues to evolve. So now you've got two players sitting next to you, and Ari and Kate that take up some of the scoring load that you don't have to do as much, but you do other things. 
-hmm. So if people called you a role player on this team, how would you respond to that? Um, I mean, yeah, I agree with what Coach Oriana said. I mean, I don't think calling someone a role player is bad. I mean, there's always things that you can do on the stat sheet. Like, yeah, a lot of people pay attention to the scoring and stuff like that, but you can get blocks, steals, rebounds, and lucky I'm lucky enough to have my teammates here who take care of the scoring and some other ones who take care of the rebound for me. But, I mean, it's like stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet as well, like defense or even just talking and communicating on the court. I think that's a big thing that a lot of people miss sometimes. So I'm just trying to – do whatever I can to find my role, and whether it changes or stays the same, just do what I can for the team and in the game. And, Ari, your role is to be the All-American, right? You're the All-American that has responsibility. You have pressure. You've got to score. You have to defend at a high level. I mean, everything sort of flows off your back, if you will, right? right. So how does that feel for you when, when you know your teammates are counting on you and – you have to to deliver. I mean, if for your team to stay in the top 10, you have to deliver. Yeah. Um, one thing about me is I embrace the challenge. I don't learn from it. And I know that my teammates trust me tremendously, my coaching staff. And so, I mean, I just take it upon myself to just keep being consistent and doing what I'm doing. And, you know, um, just when I have teammates who are stepping up, it makes my job easier. And I love that. One of the things I asked you Monday before the game is you've made more threes than anybody on your team, yet most teams still go under you on the ball screen. How does that make you feel? Yeah, same answer, disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but it's, it's something I worked on, and um, it's just all about staying balanced. You know, I watched film from Monday, and I seen the shots I took, and I was off balance or I was floating or I just wasn't set, and so, you know. Definitely got to redeem myself tomorrow. Kate, for the young players out there that don't always get what it means, what Ari just said, watching film. I mean, you can go into the film room, you can just watch yourself. Or you can go into the film room and watch how you fit inside the bigger scheme. How does that resonate with you? I mean, sometimes film is not fun. Um, you got to watch some hard things, but you can also watch yourself doing the things that you worked on for hours in practice, for hours in skill. So it's definitely, it has good stuff and bad stuff. You know, it's not always going to be pretty and it's not always going to be bad. You just got to remember that um, you've worked so hard and you just, you can, film is really to make you better. So the more you watch film, the better you can see how you're doing on the floor, what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. And I think that anyone can take advantage of that no matter if you're in high school, even now, if you're older in the pros. So I definitely think that it's something I wish I would have started doing before I got to college. So Sam and Ari, I want to know this about practice. Um, I'm guessing in practice, like when the coach rolls the ball to Ari and you're doing some one-on-one -on -one defensive drills or you're doing something, you're kind of like, everybody's like, oh Lord, I don't want to have a turn in line where I got to try to stop her from scoring, right? How, how does that play out in practice? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, that was me freshman year, not, not wanting to guard Ari on the one-on-ones. I was not trying to do that. But, I mean, I think this year um, we do have a lot of, like, newcomers. But we're really in the mentality that we just want to get better. Obviously, Ari is probably one of our best one-on-one -on -one players. So, and, honestly, defenders as well. But just going against her, you know you're going to get better. And if you make a mistake or she crosses you up, you're like, well, that's just Ari. Like, that's what Ari's going to do. Yeah. I think a lot of people are like, we're really good at just like going in line. If you get airy, you get matched up with airy. And we do so many different rotations where if like you get scored on, you have to go again and again and again. So it really just pushes you to be like, I don't care who's in front of me. I just want to stop them. Isn't that what you both want though, Ari? You need somebody to challenge you, to keep you sharp in practice, to make you, you know, go to that next level. And, and Sam, you need to be able to get, you're the best perimeter defender with Ari. I mean, the two of you together is a tough combination. <laughs> Yeah, we are. Dynamic <laughs> duo right here. <laughs> What'd you call her? Dynamic duo. <laughs> dynamic duo, yeah. Well, speaking of nicknames, um, Ari, I asked you this on Monday because I ran into your uncle at a Coaching You NBA summer clinic in Vegas. And your uncle came over to me. He's like, hey, you ever heard of Ari McDonald? I'm like, what do you think? I live under a rock? <laughs> on, man. Of course I heard of her. I haven't had a chance to cover her yet, but of course I know who she is. And he had a nickname for you. You care to share or no? Is that too embarrassing or what? Oh, uh, we can share. Um. You know, you know the other teams in the Pac-12 are going to trash talk you on this nickname. We yeah. play ASU. Right. They're fake fans. <laughs> yeah. Um, my other nickname is Pooh. 
<laughs> Who? <laughs> it doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, like to me, you don't, you don't appear to be the soft, cuddly. Uh, you seem to be more of like a barbed wirey, tough kind of. Yeah. On the court, I am, but you know, off the court, I'm a different person. <laughs> she looks like a poo off the right. court. Yeah, <laughs> right. Kate, you're gonna get in big trouble for that because I don't think you're gonna get the pass. You're not getting any passes to the post uh, next game. Forget about it. <laughs> She's gonna look the other way. Hey, what is the most fun for you guys about playing together? Obviously, I can see as somebody observing your team um, from afar because we can't be there with you. We couldn't call the game in person. But you can, it comes through the screen. Like you guys have incredible personality and you look like you really like each other. What's that like, Sam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys do, Sam? What do you, what do you guys do, Sam, to hang out? Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're in our own little pod. Yeah. So like, yeah. I think that's what makes us so like mesh well together. We're, Obviously, when you're on a team, you're with each other 24-7. So sometimes you don't want to hang out outside of basketball because you see so much, them all the time. But, I mean, we FaceTime sometimes. Um, we Ari has a dog, and Kate lives with me, so we basically have a dog together. So, you know, we always talk about our dogs. Um, but I think that's just what works. Like, we're all different in our own ways, but we just, like, somehow come together and make it all work. Okay, what's the dog's names? Uh, my dog's name is Dakota. And Dakota. mine's Roxy. <laughs> Roxy? Proxy with the P. Oh, pro oh, proxy. Okay, I got you. All right. So, um, what's Adia like? We know Adia as a great player in college and a WNBA champion and just a, an incredible mom and champion of life. What's she like as a coach? She's fun to play for, honestly. Um, I think we kind of look at her like a big sister. I don't know. Um, <laughs> She's just funny, like the way she coached and like she she had little sayings and it's just hilarious. She like really, really a deal. Like, come on now. <laughs> but I mean, like I told you Monday, it's just good to play for somebody who's been in my shoes. Um, she gives us the ins and outs and she lets us know what it was like here or in the pros. So, I mean, she's very helpful. Yeah, and she doesn't really like hold not I don't wanna say grudges, but if we have a bad practice, she's not gonna hold it over our heads for the next practice. She comes in the huddle, that was a bad practice, guys. We gotta get better tomorrow. We break it up, and then we're all laughing with each other after the practice. It's not like any hard feelings, or we know, we know as players that it was a bad practice as well. So it already hurts that much. So when your coach is on you all the time saying it's bad practice, that kind of stinks. But she's not like that. She's like, it was a bad practice. Let's just get better tomorrow. What do you think, Kate? I would say that she just like, I mean, from some coaches that I've been coached by, they're always serious all the time. Like with her, it's like you like. Like Ari said, you could literally be laughing one second and then it's serious the next. But it's just great to have like a little bit of a break every once in a while because it's like sometimes like stuff can go for so long and it's like you just want to have a little bit of fun. So she's she's good at realizing that kind of stuff. Um, she definitely uh, she's she really wanted um, like a really family oriented culture and I think she did, has done a great job of that. That was one of the main reasons why I wanted to come here was because of that. And I just think that. She is, she kind of, she just really cares about you, like, as a person as well. So I think that that really helps. Um, she really wants to know how you're feeling, how you're doing off the floor, too. And I think that is one of the main reasons why we succeed is because she cares so much. So, Kate, uh, why did you wait till after the game to have Adia send me that picture from Nike <laughs> Nationals in Augusta? And how old were you? Because in that picture are two superstars, well, three, you Vanessa Nygaard and Sue Phillips. I mean, they're legends on the West Coast, and they're great high school basketball coaches. Um, I I was like in the interview, and I was thinking, I was like, I'm pretty sure that you were at like the uh, Nike Skills Academy, and I was like talking to Sam about it. I was like, I think I have a picture, and I was like, and then I saw it was you, so I was like, oh, okay. But I just, I think I was in eighth grade. I think I was in eighth grade. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I just remember that. I and then when I saw you. Um, like on TV sometimes talking about other games, I, I recognized that that was you. So I was like, I had to go and make sure if I had the picture still on Facebook because it wasn't on my phone. Anymore, but. <laughs> it went through the media training that I provided at Nike Skills, right? I remember it. <laughs> remember any of it? I mean, I remember you talking about it. <laughs> it great was a long time ago. <laughs> right. I gave you the four Bs. Do you remember any of the four Bs? 
Okay, body language, brag on your teammate, no BS in your social media, and branding. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, that's the four B's, lady. I'll quiz you on it later. later. <laughs> no, I won't forget this time. <laughs> yeah, all right, sure, Kate. When I spin the NCAA tournament, I am going to quiz you. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to know from you guys, as collectively as a team, that really was sort of in the bottom of the Pac-12, and now the Pac-12 is tough, man. I mean, the resurgence of the Pac-12. I used to say Stanford waving the banner for all Pac-12 basketball, and that's Tara Vanderveer. Tara did that. She's elevated all programs because she cared about the league, not just her own team. So from your view, from where you guys were, bottom half, bottom third, to now at the top of the league in the time that you've been there, what does that feel like, and how would you define that legacy? For each one of you and Sam you can go first. I mean it's it's crazy the Pac-12 especially for my freshman year I mean it was good my freshman year but obviously we weren't part of the good teams but just to come up and just like be part of the top teams and I there's like I feel like there's always like at least three to four um, Pac-12 teams in the top ten um, we just keep growing and I think that's just one of the big things like the Pac-12 does is we just we I mean we use it here like we leave a legacy there's so many players that have gone through the Pac-12 and you don't realize how great the Pac-12 is until you actually, like, lead the conference, which is hard. Like, we talk about it all the time. Like, every week we feel like we're playing a top 25 team. And then I, two years ago when we went and we played Northwestern, I don't know if they were as good as they were, like, now, but we came in and we beat them by, like, 15 for the WIT championship. And it's just, like, it's crazy how, like, the levels just vary. And I think that's why the Pac-12 is the best conference because we have teams and every time we're competing against people, like, someone strong, whether they're ranked or not, like – from top to bottom, usually the Pac-12, it's always a grind. What's your take on it, Adia? I mean, uh, uh, Ari. <laughs> Adia, Ari, same thing, right? I mean, right, Junior, Adia, Junior. Oh, <laughs> but um, she's got another nickname. <laughs> just seeing my teammates win, you know, the sixth game. They went six for twenty-four. That was really hard. But um, it just speaks how competitive we are. Even as a coaching staff, we're really competitive. And just this conference, like now. You got to bring your A game every night because anybody can be beat. Like we took Washington State for granted, and you know they gave us our, you know, our second loss. So you know, last every, year we took Cal for granted. Yeah, we took Cal for granted senior night. Like so, everybody, you know, they're really good, and we can be beat. And, um, they got to put respect on a Pac-12 for sure. <laughs> what about you, Kate? Uh, I would say just in high school, I wasn't familiar with the Pac-12 as much, just coming from Texas, knowing like SEC, Big Ten. But uh, just coming to the Pac-12 and seeing all the competition, like Dave said, like battling with a team every night. Like you can't take any team lightly. Uh, anyone can come in and give you 20. So, I mean, it's just not only the teams, but the players within the team, like they're all good players. So it's just you have to really know your scout and know who you're playing. Um, and just like they said, the Pac-12 is really a great conference. And I think that um, – once the tournament comes around, we can kind of show show the country just how, how good it is. Sam, what about the fans? I mean, your first year, yeah. I don't know how many people were there, but this is an unusual year. Obviously, we can't have uh, fans in, in the arena or many fans. But just from what your assessment is on not having really any fans to all of a sudden the great sellouts and the interest and the attention that your program's getting. It is insane. It has probably one of my most favorite parts of being here. I mean, freshman year, I could probably look at everyone in the face that was in the stands, like just memorize their names because <laughs> they were, they're OGs. Like, don't get me wrong. Like love them. But as the years goes on, like we're selling out McHale, which I don't think has ever happened for women's basketball at Arizona. And it looks like when people walk by, like it looks like there's a men's game happening because there's so many fans. They're all so supportive and they just show us so much love. Like we'll be in the grocery store and someone will come up to us and say, can we take a picture with you? And just, they're so kind to us and they just support us no matter if we win or lose. So when little girls come up to you, Ari, and want your autograph or want to take their picture with you, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel good. It's kind of surreal. I'm kind of nervous for them to approach <laughs> me. So, you know, it feels good. And um, I'm just glad that my teammates and I can be, like, role models to the young girls coming up. And it, it just feels amazing. And it's a real moment at the same time. Kate, what do you think a good role model does? I mean, 
like your four B's, you know, <laughs> you got to brand yourself right. And I think that we all do a great job of that. We have no BS on our social media. <laughs> you, see, you see how we are like from our social media though, literally like you can see like how each one of us is based off like what we post. And I think that that's how it should be. Um, there's nothing bad and appropriate. You can't find anything bad in any of our social medias. And I think that just kind of shows like how we are raised, how we are brought up and how we, we once were those little girls who saw those athletes like playing and we just wanted to be just like them. And now it's like, we are that person that those little girls are looking up to. So I think it's, it's great um, to be able to do that. And it's not everyone has that opportunity. So I think we're using it to the best we can. And we're um, just trying to build our platform to be able to be the best people that we can be. So, Ari, you you kind of glanced over at the Washington State loss um, earlier this year, and this podcast is going to run before the game against Washington State. So they are also one of the best stories in college basketball. I mean, they have a chance to be an NCAA tournament team, and they haven't been since 1991, and I know none of you were born then. So when you look at – the, the Charlize Ledger Walker and how talented their team is, and they've already got your attention from the first game. What are a couple of things that you guys feel like you need to do to be able to get a win? Yeah, play solid defense uh, for 40 minutes of the game, not just one half. Um, rebound, help side, big thing from the first game, and just communication. And we got to execute. Like, we know how they're going to play us. We just got to be able to apply that to the game. And Sam, what's your scout on it? Uh, my first scout is to not foul out of the game like I did last time. <laughs> um, and then also I think our defense, like Ari said, playing 40 minutes of defense. I think we did good the first half, and then the second half they kind of picked us apart in their pick and rolls. Uh, the sisters kind of just kept throwing passes wherever they want, so we got to keep up the pressure. Aren't you guys all like sisters too? Like, I mean, do they have a special bond or more of a connection because they're blood sisters versus you guys? I mean, we've been. I mean, we've been together for what, yeah. three years now. Yeah. So, I, mean, I think our bond is been basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's three of us too. Yeah, <laughs> we're triplets. <laughs> you guys are great. Now I want to ask you this because I know you all want to play when you're done at Arizona. So I know you have aspirations to be professionals. Uh, I want to ask you about after that. So, like, I want you to we'll start with Kate. I want you to tell me what your degree is, what your hardest class is that you've taken, and what you want to be doing. 15 years from now? Uh, so I'm working on getting a degree in business management here at Eller. Um, I would say one of my hardest classes was probably accounting. Um, I'm not, accounting is just, it's <laughs> not really a lot of fun, but um, I got through it, so that's what matters. But um, 15 years from now, um, I mean, I'm hoping to maybe – I, I was looking at maybe being a coach. I think um, looking up to Adia, she she does a great job, and she looks like she really has a lot of fun with it. And, um, I mean, that would be a great job. Um, for, I feel like for anyone that was a player, like, that's always an option. Um, and I would say just being successful in whatever I do, so whatever that may be after I'm done playing basketball, um, whatever it is. Um, I graduated with a degree in psychology and then I'm getting my master's in educational leadership. Um, and 15 from years from now, I probably would want to work for Nike. My hardest class was school finance. I'm in it right now. Seven weeks. I'm almost done. <laughs> um, but yeah, 15 years from now, I'd probably want to work with Nike. Um, I did an internship. There this past summer, and Kate might do one this summer. Um, so I, I just had a lot of fun there, and I obviously want to work around sports when I'm done with basketball. So I think just being around Nike, which is such a big brand name, and they work with so many different sports and athletes, I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, so I received my bachelor's in sociology in May of 2020, and I'm now getting my master's in applied behavior analysis. And my hardest class was stats. Yeah. Um, and 15 years from now, I want to become a counselor. And I want to uh, work with uh, at-risk youth, uh, at risk youth to uh, just, you know, help them better themselves, become the best versions of themselves and have a better life and be successful. No matter what you three do, you are going to be successful. And I know you're going to have a great finish to your season this year. So I'm going to give you one last what I call parting shot or what's good for the cause. 
You can say whatever you want, and then we're out. <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. Oh, God! <laughs> um, okay, I'll just say since it's our senior night this weekend, um, shout out to Ari, my senior. I loved playing with her for these past couple years. Um, she's changed my game. She's changed how I look at life on and off the court, and I just want to thank her for everything Aww. she's done. That's a little... <laughs> <laughs> we'll go oldest youngest. Ah, all right. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great four years here, and you know I'm blessed to come across these great uh, females. You know, um, like Sam said, they helped me grow. Um, they challenged me, uh, made my leadership better, and I'm happy to play with them. And I want to miss them. And yeah, just stay stay tuned. Stuff. We're getting better. <laughs> Uh, I would say, like a D Coach Adia said, uh, like yesterday in her interview, we are trying to recruit them <laughs> next year. So don't be surprised if you see them back next year um, playing for their um, sixth year. Fifth and sixth year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't matter because, uh, like, Aries said, we're going to finish the season out um, on a good note. And we're just going to keep fighting, trying to keep getting better. So uh, Arizona hopefully will be a name in people's mouth for years to come. I can see why Coach loves you guys so much and why the fans enjoy watching you play. I can't thank you enough, Kate Reese, Sam Thomas, and Ari McDonald from Arizona for being on the podcast. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much, and I wish you luck moving forward. Thank, thank, you. thank you for having us. Yes, thank you.